A happy life is very simple. The first rule of a happy life is low expectations. That's one you can easily arrange. And if you have unrealistic expectations, you're going to be miserable all your life. And so, and I was good at having low expectations. And, and, and that helped me. And, and also, if when you get reverses, if you just suck it in and cope, that helps if you don't just fretfully stew yourself into a lot of misery. And then if there, there are certain behavioral rules, uh, it, it, some of them, you know, Rose Blumkin had quite an effect on the Berkshire culture. And she had such a, she created a business with like 500 depression dollars that became a huge business. You know what her mottos were? Always tell the truth and never lie to anybody about anything. And those are pretty good rules and they're pretty simple. And a lot of the good rules of life are like that. They're just very simple. There were a lot of questions today, people trying to figure out what the secret to life is, to a long and happy life. And, and I just wonder if you were... Now that is easy because it's so simple. What you is it? don't have a lot of envy, you don't have a lot of resentment, you don't overspend your income, you stay cheerful in spite of your troubles, you deal with reliable people and you do what you're supposed to do. And All these simple rules work so well to make your life better and they're so trite. How old were you when you figured this out? About seven. <laughs> I could tell that some of my older people were a little bonkers. I've always been able to recognize that other people were a little bonkers. And it helped me because there's so much irrationality in the world and I've been thinking about it for a long time. Its causes and its preventions and so forth. It, I, sure, it's helped me. And I, it's staying cheerful with, because it's the wise thing to do. Is that so hard? Is there any advice you would go back and give your 20-year-old self? Many of my children have worked out well, and I've had very little to do with it. <laughs> I think they come into the world to a certain extent pre-made, and you just sit there and watch. The shy baby is a shy adult. The booming, obnoxious, domineering baby is the booming, domineering, obnoxious adult. I have never found a way to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I can be cheerful about it, but I can't fix it. I can change my reaction, but I can't change the outcome. It's obvious that deferred gratifiers do better over the long pull than these impulsive children that have to spend on money on Rolex watches and other folly. And not that I'm picking Rolexes any worse than at a Philippe or something. <laughs> but but I think everybody should who's adult should save and not be stupid at spending money and, and defer gratification to get more later and all those good things that we were taught, you know, by Benjamin Franklin, thrift and so forth. And the odd thing about it is that people are kind of born deferred gratifiers or not. They've done recent psychological work on that subject. And lots of luck if you're an impulsive person that has to be gratified immediately. You're probably not going to have a very good life and we can't fix you. And, but if you have a slight tendency to deferred gratification and you can feed that tendency, you're on the way to, way to prosperity and happiness. It's the, that, that demand for immediate gratification is it's the way to ruin. It may also give you syphilis. I, uh, you know, I'm an accidental guru. We didn't set out to... I didn't set out to have an audience of people coming in and 
asking me questions about every damn subject in the world. It just, it just kind of happened by accident, and I went along with it because I think it did more good than harm, and I kind of enjoy it as long as I don't have to do it too often. But I feel, I, would, I feel sorry for people who have adulating multitudes. And I also wouldn't like a normal multitude. I love these nerds. There's so many of you now who want to be rich by going into finance. And of course, that multitude is not going to all get rich. And, and of course, 99% will be in the bottom 99%. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to work. If I look at the people in my generation who were the nerds who were patient and rational eventually did well, who lived within their income and, and worked at being sensible and, and when they saw an opportunity, grabbed it pretty fiercely and so forth. And I think that'll work for the new nerds of the world. And the people who get ahead because they're star salesmen or charismatic personalities, I'm not one of those, so I don't know how to do that. So if you're not a nerd, I can't help you. And, and I think that the odds are that most people who try to do finance are not going to succeed. And, and there's a lot of rich ed excess in it because easy money will always attract wretched excess. It's just the nature. It's like a bunch of animals feeding on a carcass in Africa. By the way, that's an image I chose on purpose. And, but no, no, so I don't think it's so pretty. And I don't think that modern finance is so wonderful. And in my day, a lot of the finance people were more like engineers. They were so chastened by the Great Depression and all the wretched failure that they really tried to make everything super safe. And it was a very different plodding place that just tried, the people weren't trying to get rich, they were trying to be safe. This modern world is radically different. And, and I'm not sure if I were starting out a new world, in your world, how well I would do. It would be a lot harder than it was to get ahead in the world the way it was when I came up. How were you? My best advance. I think you'll be happier if you reduce your expectations and if you try and satisfy them. And by the way, I think that's generally a very good idea. It sounds silly, but it's so obvious. You know how many of us are fairly content with pretty moderate success. That is worth knowing because that's what most of us are going to get. <laughs>